It's sort of surreal right now. This is an amazing time to be a fantasy fan. With Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, Wheel of Time, The Witcher, The Sandman, and even the Willow series coming out here in about two months. Studios are spending money like they never have before to bring these worlds to life, and while reception has been mixed on most of the shows, that will always happen when they are adaptations, by the way. There has been a ton of attention on the genre, and even people who haven't checked out fantasy before are becoming interested in some of these properties. Rings of Power, specifically on Amazon, has brought attention back to the Wheel of Time as Amazon produced both shows. There has been a noticeable uptick in interest in the Wheel of Time since Rings of Power released. And while much of that interest has been on the television show, that will inevitably push those people who have not read to the Wheel of Time books to give them a shot. And one incredibly common topic that comes up with previous Tolkien readers, even in media when I'm reading online, is that the Wheel of Time is essentially a retread of Lord of the Rings. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at those claims and answer the question, is the Wheel of Time just a repackaged Lord of the Rings? Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but only through the first book of the Wheel of Time series, Eye of the World. There will be minor non-plot related spoilers for the rest of the books, but really just references for comparison. If you want no spoilers though of any kind, watch this video at your own risk. So before jumping into the video, make sure to smash the like button to help out the video with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel for more Wheel of Time and fantasy related content. That is all I do here on this channel. I also have another channel that I'll mention again at the end of the video all about self-development called No Lead Grow. Make sure to check that out. That's what I do for a living. And if you do like fantasy books, I highly recommend checking out the audiobook versions of those fantasy books. There are some really great audiobooks out there. I can recommend any of Brandon Sanderson's works as well as The Wheel of Time. They are all read by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, who are two amazingly talented audiobook readers that really perform the books. It's a totally different experience and it's something that you can do while you're driving, while you're cooking, or you're riding on the bus or the sub. Way. Audible.com has been one of the sponsors of this channel since the very beginning, and they are offering my viewers a free audiobook. Just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You can keep the book whether you pay a dime or not. You're going to get one book a month if you do choose to keep the service, which for me works out great because I do a lot of audiobooks. Thank you to Audible for their support. Go check it out. But all right, let's dive into the issue at hand. If you pick up Eye of the World, the first of the Wheel of Time books, it's almost impossible not to notice some of the similarities to The Lord of the Rings. In fact, some of these similarities have led writers online and some people in discussion forums to label The Wheel of Time as a ripoff of Lord of the Rings. So what are these similarities? Well, there are tons of them. Let's start with the basic. The Shire and the Two Rivers are both remote country locations where there is relative peace at the start of the story that is broken up by the bad guys. Of course, this results in our protagonist and his friends fleeing in the night, being chased by black riders. Murdral are very much like Nazgul. But don't worry, the protagonists are led by a wise wizard and a ranger that help them get to safety. Moraine serves a very similar role to Gandalf, and Lan is a very clear reference to Aragorn. Now, of course, they're off on a quest to save the world together in their group, and they pick up some new members along the way. They are being followed, however, by a creepy figure that is frail and somewhat crazy. That figure, in fact, was tortured by the bad guys also. So both Gollum and Padan Fane, both captured by baddies, both tortured. And who are the bad guys? Well... There's the Dark Lord that was defeated more than 3,000 years ago, but isn't really defeated and is regaining strength. And that Dark Lord's fortress is a mountain in the Mountains of Doom. Of course, the similarities don't end there. Both books take place in the third age of their time frame, after a major cataclysm in the far past. Instead of orcs, we have Trollocs, but they're just basically primary bad guys foot soldiers. We also have the Ogier, which are remarkably similar to Ents. Minas Tirith and Tarvalin are both white cities. The Dark Lord's primary lieutenant is actually the major bad guy and primary antagonist, as the bigger bad is locked away. So Ashamael is the lieutenant to the Dark One, who is the equivalent of Morgoth. There are even direct references in the book to the Lord of the Rings. There is the Nine Rings Tavern that shows up in the Great Hunt. There's a book referred to called To Sail Beyond the Sunset. Those are direct references to Lord of the Rings straight out of Robert Jordan's mouth. So with all of that, does that settle it? Robert Jordan ripped off the Lord of the Rings to make the Wheel of Time? Well, no. <laughs> 
These references are certainly deliberate, however, they are simply very superficial nods to Tolkien. It's hard to see now with all the other material out there, but at the time Wheel of Time was published, much of the fantasy landscape was shaped by Tolkien. In fact, Robert Jordan's publisher at the time told him that if he didn't make his story more like Lord of the Rings, nobody would read it. So Robert Jordan deliberately included themes, tropes, and settings that were familiar to Tolkien readers in the first chapters of Eye of the World. In an interview in 2002, Robert Jordan said this, In the first chapters of Eye of the World, I tried for a Tolkien-esque feel without trying to copy Tolkien's style. But that was by way of saying to the reader, okay, this is familiar, this is something you recognize, now let's go where you haven't been before. I like taking a familiar theme, something people think they know, and know where it must be heading, and then standing it on its ear and giving it a twist that subverts what you thought you knew. I must admit that I occasionally drop in a reference, for example, there's an inn called the Nine Rings, and Loyal is seen reading a book entitled To Sail Beyond the Sunset, but it isn't a regular thing by any means. When he says that he twisted and subverted the tropes, he is not kidding. Almost every trope that I listed earlier where it feels like Robert Jordan is pulling from Tolkien goes a completely different direction and changes that trope almost completely. For example, Moraine and Gandalf. Moraine is flawed, unlike Gandalf. Uh, she fails in her leadership in many ways. And the most important way that she's different is that she's female, something that was very new at the time. In fact, Lord of the Rings has very few female characters of any major importance. Wheel of Time features them all over the place. Rand is a very flawed protagonist. He has very little in common with Frodo and is actually the powerful one. He's not protected by his companions. He's the powerful one. Pot on Fane goes in a completely different direction than Gollum. I could go on and on, but the main important thing here is that Tolkien and Robert Jordan are very different writers. Robert Jordan wrote a 15-book series that takes that starting point and expands and expands and expands. It's hard to get past book two of The Wheel of Time, let alone the later books in the series, and think that they have anything at all in common with Lord of the Rings. Yet, this criticism or this commentary continues to come up, and I would argue mostly by people who have not read Eye of the World past the first 10 chapters or so. So, did Wheel of Time rip off Lord of the Rings? No. There are allusions to similar tropes, but the stories have far, far more that is different than they do that is similar. We may find out more about this in the upcoming book, Origins of the Wheel of Time, that has been written by Michael Livingston and releases here in the very near future. In the book, Livingston will be revealing a lot of how Robert Jordan came up with his world, the motivations and inspirations for many of his characters, as well as some new content from Robert Jordan's notes. But anyways, what do you think about the similarities between Wheel of Time and Lord of the Rings? Did you notice it? Does it help you get into the books or hurt your reading experience in Eye of the World? Let me know in the comments of the video. Again, please give the video a like if you liked it and subscribe to the channel to get updates to when I release new fantasy and Wheel of Time content. Also check out my new channel called No Lead Grow which is all about what I do for a living which is coaching, professional development, personal development. The goal there is to give a VIP experience to folks that would never normally get to be able to afford it. So if you want to grow, if you want to make more money, if you want to help yourself, check out the channel. Give it a subscribe if, it, if you think it earns it. I would love to have you over there. I know it's not the type of content I make here, but I think it'll be good for you. Also, thank you to my patrons for your support. You make this possible and your continued support of the channel keeps me making lore-focused videos. If you want to become a patron of the channel, please check out the Patreon link in the description of the video. Also, make sure to check out one of these videos here that you might also like if you like this one. Thank you for watching and until next time, Peace out.